how to model gearbox. We'll make from the scratch the gearbox with the Helco gears step by step in this tutorial. We'll start modeling the Helco gears with the formula and all the parts. Then we'll make the assembly and the finish with the motion. I will not rush because I want you to see all the steps from zero to the end. For these reasons, we'll make this project in different parts. In part one, we'll focus on the Helco gears. Make sure to be until the end of these videos because the Helco gears is the heart of this project. Let's get started. Let me start to explain how to move your model in the work workspace. To zoom in and out your model, rotate the wheel on your mouse in and out. To move in any direction, press down control on your keyboard and at some times press down the wheel on your mouse and move your model in the left, right, up and down. To rotate your model, press down the wheel on your mouse and move in any direction. Let's start modeling the helico gears by opening a new section. The first sketch will be the pitch diameters, outside diameters and root diameter. We need to define the first variable, which is uh, the number of teeth and uh, the module. By default, you will not see the equation on your three managers. You need to change your setting. Right click in N items in the tree manager, then go to hidden tree items, then select the hide show three items, wait a little bit, right now in my setting is show, but by default is automatic, I can change to automatic to see what happens, click ok. As you can see, it does not show up the equation, I will go back and change to show the equation. Now we can change our global variable. Right click on the equation and select Manage Equation. We'll start with the module which will be represented by the M. Press Enters and write 2.4 mm. Next write Z which will represent the number of teeth and press Enter and write 30 without the unit. If I go to the equation, I have this error. If I expand, now I have my M and the Z. Activate different planes, then activate the SQL, make the SQL, activate the smart dimensions, and the types equal to access the global variables, and they choose Z multiplied by N. I have the first diameter which is the pitch diameter. Now I go to, to the second one which is the outside diameter. Activate the SQL, make the SQL, activate the smart dimensions, and the types equal sign to access the global variable, then open parentheses, use Z plus 2, close parentheses and write times, open quotation mark and if you don't see the variable and write in between the quotation mark the M and then click the green check to update the formulas and the green check to complete. The last one will be the root diameter. Activate the SQL, make the SQL and activate the smart dimension. Measure between the inside and outside diameter. Type equal sign to access the global variable. Choose M times go to function and select if. 
right in between the quotation mark m then equals equal or greater than 1.5 types common types 2.5 types commons and the types 2.4 This means that if, if the module is equal or greater than 1.5, it will multiply by 2.5. If not, it will multiply by 2.4. Rebuild to save your change. And go to the features and activate the extrude. Make sure to select the middle plane and the type the width of 25. Click OK. Then we have the first part complete. The next step is making the teeth and the cut profile. Activate the top plane, flip to normal, then activate the line and make one line like that. This will be the guide when I use the loft cut. I will make a midpoint relation between the origin and the line. Select the origin, press Ctrl, with control on and select the line and the make a midpoint relations and I click the green check. Now, whenever I move my line, it will move through the center. Activate the smart dimension, select the right plane, the line, and define the angle to be 16. So I need to move or project this line from the center to the top surface. For that, go to the curves, select project curves, on left box, select sketch on faces, then click on the face where you want to project this line. Then click the green check. We have the line well set. Now let's move on to the, to the next step. Select the front plane and the sketch. Flip to normal and activate the center line. Make a line from the center to the, to the edge of this uh, OD outside the diameter. It is also fully defined. I will use the three point arc, but before that, let me activate the dynamic mirror entities. Select the centers. You can see the equal sign, meaning that uh, the dynamic mirror entities it is also on. Now I can activate the three point arc. Set the first point outside of the seco and the second one inside of the seco. And uh, the angle and the click. Now it is done. We have two arc because of uh, the dynamic mirror entities which is on. So now let me here adjust the sketch first. I will go first to this first sketch and make it visible or click to show. I will select the root diameters and click to convert entities. I will move the two arc to be started on the root diameter. Now I activate the trim and delete the unwanted part of the seco. Do the same on the top seco. Activate the offset, select the outside seco and define the distance to be 1.5 and click the green check. Move to arcs to the end of this edge of the seco. Activate the trim and delete the unwanted part of the seco. Click the green check. We have the profile, but it is not fully defined yet. So we need here to fully define with different center lines and angle. I will hide the first sketch for now. Activate the center line and make a horizontal line like that. Make some relation. Let me first go back and show the first sketch again. 
Select this point on the horizontal line, keep the control on, select the arc and the pitch diameters and the make intersection relation. Do the same thing on the other side. Select the point, keep the control on and select the arc and make the intersection relation. Uh, next, activate the center line and keep the, the dynamic mirror entities on and make this line like that. Now make the relation. Select this line, keep the control on, and select the arc and make the tangent relation. Do the same thing on the other side. Select both lines and the tangent relation and they click OK. The next step is to define the pressure angle of our helico gears. Let me start by activate the center line and make a line like that. Press ES key on my keyboard and select both the new line and this arc and make the tangent relation. Select this point and this new center line and make a coincident relation. Activate the smart dimensions and measure the pressure angle to be 26 degree and they click OK. The next step is set up the center of the next teeth. Activate the center line and make a line like that. And the press ES key, activate the smart dimension. And let me here make the last formula. Equal sign, right 180 degree, which is half turn and it will be divided by number of the teeth, which is Z. If you don't see the global variable here, simply type quotation mark and write the Z in between the quotation mark. Remember that we define the number of teeth to be Z at the beginning of our tutorial. The last thing is to set the width teeth to be equal to the width of the cut. For that, activate the center line and make the last line. Select the last two lines and make a relation to be perpendicular. And last, and last but not least, select the last line with the first horizontal line and make the relation to be equal. And I click OK. So now it is fully defined. So our sketch is fully defined. Now let's here move on. The profile is in the middle plane, so we need here to cop to front and back face. Before that, as always, I need to save my project. Just type gear one for gear box project and save. Now we can move on. Select this sketch with the control on and keep the control on. Select the face where you want to copy. Go to insert and find the derived sketch. The copy profile is not fully defined, so we need here to fully define. Select this point and then keep the control on. Select this line and then make a pierce relation. On the bottom, Make a coincident relation between the center of the profile with the origin. Select both origin and the center of the profile and select a coincident relation. So, as you can see, it is fully defined. Let's now here copy again on the back surface as well. But before that, let's here first rebuild. Select again the sketch number four. Select the face where you want to copy insert and derived sketch select this origin select the origin of the profile and make a coincident relation click ok select these centers with the control on and keep the control on select this line and make a pierce relation click ok and rebuild the next step is to cut go to features Select activate the loft cut and select all the CD profiles, the first, second and the third. So we have the first cut 
of our model. Activate the fillets and define the dimension. Type equal sign global variable. In this case, is a module which is a M, and multiply by 0.2. Make the fillet here and here. Click the green check to complete. Next, select the cut and the, the fillets. Go to circular pattern and activate it. So once it is activated on the left, select the face and uh, OK. So the Helco gear is almost complete. Now let's here finish with uh, the hubs and the keyway. So we need here as well to, to put that the hole on the middle. Select this face and the, the sketch. Flip to normal. Activate the seco. Make the seco. Activate the smart dimension. Type equal sign to access the global variable and the shoes M. Multiply by 10. Select the green check and click OK. So go to features, activate the extrude cut, select through all both. Select OK. So done. Let's move on. Select this face. Sketch, activate offset, select this line, and the, the distance will be 5. Distance of 5. Click OK. Select this. Select the inside Zico, convert entities. Go to features, activate extrude, boss base, and the blind, and the distance will be 6. Click OK. Now, because at the beginning we use the mid plane, so we can here use the middle. Let's now here activate the middle, select the last extrude, and select the front plane of the middle to plane. Activate the green check, so we have the hub. Let's finish with the, the keyway. Select this face, sketch, flip to normal. Select the Seco to convert the entities, activate the center line and then make this line up to, to here. Activate dynamic middle entities, select this line and activate the line. Make a vertical and horizontal line like that. Activate the trim and delete the unwanted part of the Seco. Activate the smart dimension and here is 4 and here is 2.5. So fully defined, now I can go to features, extrude the cut and select the through all both. So it is done. The Helico gear number one, the heart of this project is complete. This is the most difficult to do and if you are still here, this means that you won't have any problem with the rest of the project. Let's continue with part number two and I hope you like and please don't forget to subscribe and share with a friend. See you there.